Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to another bite-sized Buell. Uh, ooh, let me turn on my light here so you can see me. That's better. <laughs> uh, so my name is Carissa Cedar. I'm the producer with the Buell Planetarium at Carnegie Science Center. And I'm going to just, just we're going to take a quick look at our night sky tonight because there are some pretty exciting things that uh, you'll be able to see if it's clear. That's always the caveat, isn't it? So uh, you can see up on my screen right now, I'm actually gonna clear away what I have up right now because we're gonna take a look at our night sky. And I have our, I have our sky set to this evening. So this is tonight's sky at about 7.30 PM. So tonight at 7.30, it's a little bit after sunset. It's nice and dark. Um, and once that happens, we start to get to see a lot of cool things. The wintertime sky is full of some pretty bright things that are pretty easy to locate. Uh, so we can see a bigger view of our current night sky right here. Uh, of course, tonight we'll be able to see our moon and it doesn't look like much right now, but if we take a closer look at it, Let's zoom in on our moon. So our moon right now is in a waxing gibbous phase. So it's just past its first quarter uh, and it's gonna be getting fuller each night. So uh, as, as if you go outside the next few nights, keep an eye on it. It's always fun to be able to track the moon and see how uh, it appears a little bit differently each night. It also shows up in a slightly different place in our sky every night. So the moon is a great kind of introduction to tracking things in the night sky because it's, it, it moves and changes every single night. So tonight though, it's gonna be nice and bright in our sky at a lovely waxing gibbous phase. You can see some of those craters across the Terminator there. The Terminator is the name for this line between night and day. It just happens to be the best name ever. Uh, <laughs> So we can see our moon tonight. That's probably going to be the most noticeable thing, at least right away. Um, now, there are also a lot of other things, though. Once you find the moon tonight, you'll be able to figure out that you are facing south. So if you know which way direction, if, if you know how to find which direction is south, you'll be able to find a whole bunch of things that we're going to look at today. Now, there's also something really bright in our sky right now that's going to be easy to spot on any clear night. And it's going to be tonight pretty close to the moon. Not too far away, we have the planet Mars visible in our sky. And Mars is, has been brilliant in our night sky. I saw it last night, it looked amazing. Uh, and it has that distinct reddish glow to it. So you'll certainly be able to see that red orange color to it. It's usually how you know you're looking at Mars. Uh, but if we get a closer look at the red planet here. Here we have Mars, the red planet. Gets its red color, not from temperature. It's a very cold planet. Uh, it's further away from the sun than we are here on Earth. Um, Mars is a very cold, dry desert planet. It actually gets its red color from the rusty iron oxide in its soil that covers the planet uh, in that dirt and that dust. And it reflects that lovely red color that we get to see. So Mars is very distinct looking. All right, so we can see Mars easily. We can also see Mars's two moons. Uh, these you can't see uh, with just your eyes, um, but we have Phobos and Deimos that orbit around Mars. Now you may have also seen in view here, we have Uranus in our night sky. Uranus, you're not gonna be able to see with the naked eye. Um, you do need a telescope in order to see the planet Uranus because it is much, much further away. Uh, so it is not quite visible to our human eyes. Uh, so you'll easily though be able to see the planet Mars. It's nice and bright and right now, in, in our prime time view at about 7.30, it is high over our heads. Uh, it's definitely one of the most prominent objects in our sky. 
Uh, but the other things I wanted to talk about are in the southeast. So in the eastern part of the sky, that's where our sun rises, but that's also where our stars rise. And that's due to the rotation of the earth. So the earth spinning is what causes this motion in the sky. Uh, so rising in the east, if we do a little turn here, we have kind of our main cast of characters for the winter sky. So we're gonna get a little bit of a closer view on what's going on in the Southeast right now. So we have one of the most recognizable constellations of them all, probably one of the most famous, and it's this guy right here. If you can guess who this is. You might know him by his belt. This is the constellation of Orion, the hunter. So Orion the hunter, let's get a closer view here of Orion. Uh, very famous constellation uh, for good reasons. He's, first of all, it's a big constellation taking up a lot of sky when you see it in the night sky. Uh, but it's also made of some very bright stars that are very easily visible. Even if you're in the middle of a city somewhere, you'll be able to see Orion's brightest stars like Betelgeuse, which is in his shoulder right here. Betelgeuse is a red giant star and it's also famous for being at the very end of its life cycle. And Betelgeuse was actually in the news a lot last year, if you remember the beginning of last year, uh, all the way back at the beginning of last year uh, because it had dimmed quite a bit. So uh, astronomers were keeping a close eye on Betelgeuse to see if maybe that was it. Maybe if that was going to be the end of Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Betelgeuse's life cycle. Uh, but it turns out it wasn't. It, it is now back at uh, kind of its previous brightness. And that does tend to happen sometimes. The star does dim in brightness and, and brighten back up again throughout its life cycle. So we're still keeping an eye on Betelgeuse, but you can see it easily in the night sky, uh, nice and bright. Another really bright one in the constellation of Orion is Rigel in his knee. Rigel's a hot blue star. Uh, we can see, of course, the three stars that form Orion's belt, which is a famous star shape that we can see. Orion's belt is not the constellation though. Orion is the constellation. But Orion's belt can help us find a couple of really cool things in the sky. Uh, if you have binoculars or even a telescope is ideal, uh, you can look in this area of the sky, right below Orion's belt, you might see a faint fuzzy patch in the sky. And if I can click on it, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> let's, let's start to zoom in because you might start to see something interesting happen. So this is an object called the Orion Nebula. This is a stellar nursery. So this is an area of the sky, uh, an area in space where there are clouds of gas and dust that are forming stars. So this is how stars are formed over a very long time, over millions of years. These clouds of gas and dust start to condense uh, those particles come together and those objects get more and more massive until eventually stars are born and even uh, baby solar systems. So there are, there are stars and solar systems forming within these clouds. Now we can see some of the brightest stars at the very center here. You can kind of imagine we're looking into a bowl of stars right now. So imagine we're looking into kind of a bowl of stars and these ones are the brightest here. Those are the ones actually illuminating the clouds the most around them. The reason we're able to see the Orion Nebula so well. The Orion Nebula is definitely one of my favorite things to look at through a telescope. Uh, you might even be able to see it if you have binoculars, you might be able to see those clouds a little bit. So we can see Orion the Hunter uh, and Orion is a great guidepost to some other things in the sky. So we're actually gonna follow Orion's belt right here, these three stars. And we're gonna use those three stars to point us, well, first we're gonna to go to the right and we'll find a bright star here called Aldebaran. Uh, now Aldebaran 
is kind of an orange star as well. And it sits in front of this V-shaped group of stars. That V-shaped group of stars is a star cluster called the Hyades. <clears throat> and, <coughs> excuse me, the Hyades star cluster, uh, it's a group of stars, a star cluster in general is a group of stars that are all pretty close to one another in space. and. Uh, typically are all born from the same clouds of gas and dust, like we saw in the Orion Nebula, um, but these are much older. So they're not part of that nebula anymore or a nebula, uh, but they are kind of floating through space together. There's a more famous star cluster nearby though. So we've we used Orion's belt to find Aldebaran, but we're gonna keep going to this group of stars right here. This is one of my favorite things to see with the naked eye uh, because you can see a couple little stars here, depending on how good your eyesight is, you might see five or six or seven uh, little stars here. And if you have binoculars, again, this is a great binocular object to look at, you will see a lot more. So let's get a closer look at this object. This is called the Pleiades star cluster. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, uh, or by its Japanese name, Subaru. So if you've ever seen the Subaru logo, that's what the Pleiades, that's, it's the Pleiades cluster. So the Pleiades star cluster, uh, known as the Seven Sisters, because we can only see about seven of those stars with the unaided eye. And in mythology, those Seven Sisters uh, were put up into the sky. But of course, upon closer look here with the telescope eye view, you can see hundreds of stars that are part of the Pleiades star cluster. And again, these stars were all formed in the same region of space. They're kind of traveling through space together. The Pleiades star cluster is moving pretty quickly. And they're actually passing through some clouds right now. So we can actually see some nebulae around them that's reflecting their bright starlight. Uh, now these stars are very hot and they're going to burn very quickly. So uh, we're kind of in the perfect time right here in the universe where we're able to see the Pleiades not only exist, but also passing through these clouds. Uh, definitely one of my favorite things to look for in the night sky. And right now it's almost directly over our heads. So you can't miss it. If it's a clear night, uh, definitely look for the Pleiades cluster. All right, so we got a good view of the Pleiades. Again, there's seven sisters. And they are part of, you may have seen it before, let me put them up there. They're part of the constellation of Taurus, the bull. So here we have Taurus, the bull, one of our zodiac constellations. And Taurus is right next to Orion. So we can see all sorts of things right now. We're also going to look at the other side of Orion's belt. So we used Orion's belt to the right to find Aldebaran. We're gonna use Orion's belt, but this time go to the left to find this star right here, which is called Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. The brightest one. Number one is Sirius, and we can only see it in the winter time. So definitely go look for Sirius, uh, but it is just starting to rise now in the early evening. So we'll be able to see Sirius for a couple months. Uh, and it is quite brilliant in our night sky. You can't miss it. It's got kind of a whitish blue color to it as well. And Sirius is also known as the dog star because it belongs to the constellation of Canis Major or the big dog. There's Canis Major. So Canis Major is one of Orion's hunting dogs. So we have the bright star Sirius. We have the bright star Betelgeuse. There's another shape that we can look for really easily and you might see it. It's called the Winter Triangle. Uh, and it's made of three bright stars that form almost a perfect equilateral triangle. So three sides, all the same length. So we have Betelgeuse, Sirius, and the third one over here, Procyon. These three stars are gonna stick out in our southeastern skies. So you'll be able to see them quite easily. 
So Procyon belongs to another constellation over here. Uh, this is Canis Minor. Uh, this is Canis Minor. It takes a little more imagination to see, but this is the little dog. Two stars. Again, I didn't make up this constellation. Someone saw a dog there. <laughs> probably back when we could actually see more stars because uh, we have to deal with a lot of light pollution. So a lot of these stars might not be visible to us as easily. But so we can see again, the winter triangle, something super easy to locate. And remember those stars are Betelgeuse, Procyon and Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. So those are going to stick out nicely tonight. There's a bunch of other bright things in the sky. Uh, we're going to have high over our heads in the other direction here. Pretty much due east is the bright star Capella. And that belongs to the constellation of Auriga, the charioteer. So you can look for Auriga in the night sky. You can also look for these two stars. Their names are Castor and Pollux. So here we have Castor and Pollux, and those are, of course, the Gemini twins. So we can see the constellation Gemini right here as well. So there's a whole lot of bright things right in this southeastern area and rising in the east. Our winter sky has some really, really bright things. Uh, so on the next clear night, I'm looking outside right now, it looks sunny. So maybe, maybe we'll be able to see the stars later, at least here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but keep, the, keep your eye on the sky the next few nights and see if you can go out and locate for yourself the planet Mars, uh, but also see if you can use Orion's belt to help you find Aldebaran and the Pleiades star cluster. Uh, see if you can use Orion's belt to help you find Sirius, that brightest star in the night sky, and then completing that winter triangle, uh, which will stick out nicely in our evening sky. That is just kind of a quick look at some things that you can find for yourself tonight. Uh, but that concludes today's Bite Size Buell. We'll be back here uh, every Thursday bringing you something else uh, new to look at, maybe a tour of our night sky or some other star stories. So until then, uh, I've been Carissa and thank you for joining us and have a great day.